Hi, hello. Before the video starts, I just wanted to pop in editing version of me several hours after the fact to give a little bit of a PSA. This Monday, October 21st, like if you're watching this when I actually put this video out, it's the federal election in Canada. So I would just like to remind everybody, just as like a PSA, all of my fellow Canadian citizens who may be watching, please take time out of your day this Monday to vote. There are lots of people out there who are banking on apathy and low voter turnout in order to get what they want, and I ask that we not indulge those people. Voting matters a lot. So please, all of you who are able to, go out there and vote this Monday. I don't care whether you're on the opposite end of the political spectrum as me. Please just go out there and vote. That's all from me. Now let's get into the actual video. <laughs> I'm a little bit on the struggle bus today. And so I've spent like a couple of hours trying to like get my life in order and then I've showered and now I'm sitting down here to try and get ready. And so I figured I'd just do like a nice little zen chatty get ready with me where I talk about, you know, how life's been going, maybe discuss some like random things that have caught my eye, etc, etc. I'm gonna try and do this with like absolutely minimal edits, so this might be like kind of long and rambly, maybe I'll like stumble over my words, there might be some like weird pauses while I'm blending stuff out, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. But without any further ado, let's turn me from this into whatever you guys saw as the thumbnail. Let's get it! So I've gotten out of the shower, I've done all of my skincare and everything. I already have sunscreen on, it's been about 10 minutes so it's had some time to like dry and set. So the look I think I'm going to do today is a look that I've been doing for a while now. It's what I like to call the Sunmi Noir album look. There's a musical artist called Sunmi who released a song called Noir. If I had had the wherewithal to actually film my September favorites video last week, and I'll talk about that a bit more later, I would have put the song Noir into my September favorites because it's just like such a great song. Given that it's called Noir, you would think it would be like maybe some like weird jazzy femme fatale number. It's not. It's this really, really interesting 80s style pop song. I don't know, maybe editing me will like play a little bit of it in the back. The song's incredible, the music video is also incredible because it's basically about like the lengths to which we will go to achieve notoriety and fame and attention on social media. It's like super fascinating. Hopefully I'll have linked it in the cards and played like a snippet of the song while I've been like blabbering on. But we're not here to actually talk about the song today. Or at the very least, Sunmi's look in the music video was not the thing that inspired me to start doing this look. The thing that inspired me to start doing this look was the cover of the single. Hopefully I've inserted an image of it somewhere here. But the thing that sort of caught my eye about that look is the way that it combines pink and orange together. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a person who, I've never really thought pink and orange are colors that go together. I've always felt like they clash. I've seen South Asian outfits before that try and combine pink and orange. And although I think like those outfits are fine, I've never once in my life entertained the idea of putting pink and orange together on my face because I feel like I learned a long time ago that like, oh, pink is a cool tone color and orange is a warm tone color and you wanna keep your looks kind of like uniform. You don't wanna mix cool and warm tones together. And so this idea that you could like pair pink and orange together on your face, I know like gajillions of people have done it before Sunmi, but for some reason, it took me seeing Sunmi's single cover for Noir to be like, huh, interesting. This looks good, like maybe I should try this out. Oh, by the way, everything I'm using will be put down in the description box. The main thing I just did is I took like a pink color blush and I put that all in my crease and now I'm gonna take an orange color blush and put it all over my lid. Both of these blushes are shimmery, by the way. So the song Noir actually came out like way earlier in the year. I think it came out around like springtime. And ever since I saw it, one of my like go-to looks has been to basically combine pink and orange on the same face. I really like it. It was something that I never used to do in makeup before. I'm confident lots of other people on beauty YouTube and stuff have been doing this look. <laughs> Like, does that ever happen to you guys where it's like, yeah, you see a thing like a gajillion times, but you like don't really pay attention to it until one time you suddenly do. And it's like life changing in a sense. 
and I just like straight up ignored it until I saw the Noir album cover. And since then, I've been more encouraged to try it out myself and I've like seen a lot of other people doing it. So this is not anything revolutionary, but it's a look that I really like on myself and I could use a look that I really like on myself right now as a little bit of a pick-me-up. So that is what we are going with. So I suppose I should chat a little bit about like what's been going on. It's just, it's been a week y'all. Like I've been on the struggle bus. I actually like last Sunday morning sat down to try and film my September favorites because I thought I would get it out for you guys as like a bonus video this week. And what happened was I got halfway through filming it and then I had to go switch out my SD card. And when I went to go switch out my SD card, I checked my phone and, and an artist who I had been following and kind of idolized in a sense or really admired since I was around 16 years old, the news came on my phone that she had died. Specifically that um, she had committed suicide and I saw that notification. It was really jarring because she, she's my age, right? I'm born in 1994, she was born in 1994. She's about two and a half months younger than me. And so to have found that out about her in the middle of the video, like I tried to go back to filming. I made a very deliberate point to not pursue any of the news articles because um, detailed descriptions or discussions of suicides are often very, very triggering for people. And I'm like, no, thank you. Let's not mess with my mental health anymore. Then it's already sort of being messed with, right? And it's, it's particularly like a sore spot um, for me, especially when it's like people in Asian countries, for example, who take their lives. And by Asian, I really do mean like all of Asia. Um, I know in like the US, when people say Asian, they only think of like East Asian countries, South Asia, India, like we're all a part of Asia too. Um, but there is something especially about when I hear about people in Asian countries sort of taking their life that is particularly very like triggering for me because I know that a lot of it has to do with like our culture around shame in mental health and just the lack of resources and the overwhelming feeling that like you cannot be helped because in a lot of Asian countries it really does kind of feel like you can't really be helped because like a lot of mental illnesses, depression, anxiety, like those are things that like aren't acknowledged as real diseases. And I made a very big mistake in like 2017 when a person who I had really looked up to and actually like crushed on when I was 16 years old, when they um, took their own life, I made the mistake of reading their the note that they left behind. It upset me for like weeks. It like messed with my head really badly and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't do any of that like stuff this time around, but it was really hard for me to like turn the camera back on and pretend like nothing happened and continued filming. So I just kind of scrapped that idea and that was like the kickoff to like a really weird and kind of like cursed week because since that day, there have been like three other deaths or near deaths in my own family, amongst the people I know around me. So it's just been like a really weird, odd, hard week. Usually I will just do like this for my eyes and that I'll just use the blushes. But today I kind of want to amp things up. So I have these uh, Korean eyeshadows and this is actually a thing I was going to mention in my summer favorites, but then I ended up like losing the footage of it. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to mention this in my September favorites, but then it never happened. So I guess I'm going to mention them here today. I really want to shout out like sparkly, glittery Korean eyeshadows. So here's the thing in Korea, the eyeshadow game for like matte eyeshadows and even for like standard sort of metallic shimmery eyeshadows, weak sauce, horrible literally never seen a pigmented palette in Korea in my life. However, where Korea really excels is with these like glittery, ultra sparkly, almost foil style shades. The hourglass scattered light eyeshadows that everyone talks about, there's like all of these beautiful micro shimmers. It's like so foiled and beautiful. Like eyeshadows like that have existed in Korea for like a really long time. Like they're ahead of us when it comes to like the micro glitter, ultra shimmery, interesting dimensional sparkly eyeshadow game. And so I actually happen to own a bunch of those products. The most 
easily accessible to everybody are the Kaja Bento boxes, specifically the all shimmer ones. The very first one, I think it's called Rosewater, the Rosewater Trio, and then the second one, which is the one that I have, which is the shade Orange Blossom. This was what I was wearing on my eyes in my September Favorites video. It's like this ultra sparkly, glittery, textured, lovely eyeshadow. When these came onto the market, like I'm sure you've actually heard a lot of influencers and stuff like sing the praises of this because this seems like an anomaly to them, but like this is standard fare for Korean eyeshadows. And I own not just like these ones from Etude House and these ones from Kaja, but I also have one from like Apure. I have a couple like K-beauty style sh ultra shimmery eyeshadows. The MAC Dazzle Shadow Formula is pretty much like a K-beauty formula. So if you've ever like tried one of those out, you know exactly what I mean. It's just like this beautiful multi-dimensional ultra shimmery sparkly look. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one that I have that's like a interesting pinky orange gold duochrome and I'm just gonna uh, apply it on top to add a bit of pizzazz because I could use a little pizzazz after the way this week has made me feel which like every single day I have woken up to myself and I just thought oh hi thanks for checking in I'm still a piece of garbage so yeah, like not been doing well. Haven't really been in a good headspace. I think, and this is how I like know I'm doing much better than I did at any other point in my life. Cause like, let's not be like ultimate Debbie Downer. Monday was like Canadian Thanksgiving. So I didn't really have to like go to class or anything. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, I was like just sleeping a lot. For hours and hours every single day, I just found myself like sleeping a bunch. And that to me is like red flag behavior. So if I ever find myself like sleeping for insane number of hours, when I have like no reason to be, that's usually an indication that there's like something up with my mood. It's like the first sign that like things are going a little bit downhill. And in previous times in my life, I've like not had the self-awareness to notice that my mood was going downhill until I was already like three-fourths of the way down that hill and there was like no stopping me because the momentum was like really too intense. Um, but this time around, like after like two days or so, I immediately sort of clued in on what was going on and I was able to see that like, oh, my mood is like not doing well, that I'm just feeling the urge to like sleep a lot. I haven't exercised for the last two days. Like I'm just not feeling great and it's not because I'm like, physically ill with the flu or whatever, it's like the depression is kind of rearing its head and I'm having like a period of a little bit of a low mood. And so since I realized that on like Thursday morning-ish, um, I've been actually just working to counteract that. Because the reality is like, I have a bunch of like midterms next week. Like I can't just be like all sad about my life right now. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do my base now and then come back to my eyes later. The thing that I did on Thursday to sort of mitigate um, how I had been feeling and the fact that I had been like sleeping a lot and just avoiding everything, like avoiding the entire world, all of my responsibilities, all of the stuff. Cause I just like, I did not feel like up to the task of facing up to this world, which is ridiculous. Cause like I have stuff to do and like lying in bed wallowing. It feels really good in that present moment. Like it feels not really good, but it feels comforting in that present moment to do that. But I know that if I just like kept doing that, one, it would have like taken me further down a really dark path, but two, that I would be avoiding doing things that are actually beneficial for me and that I would be beating myself up about that decision later on. And so, because it wasn't like my mood had sunk into like an irrevocable darkness or depth or anything like that, it was just like we were on the beginnings of the decline, like I was able to sort of clock that. Um, the thing that I did on Thursday is I showered and I didn't really have the energy to like put on makeup or get ready because sometimes you just like don't, but I forced myself to physically leave my house and go to the cafe that's like a block down from me and I sat there with like my laptop and my like books and everything and I managed to study for a couple of hours before I had to go to my Spanish class and so I managed to have like a halfway productive day on Thursday because of that. And then Friday, I also ended up doing the same thing where it's just like I got up and I got myself out of the house in order to be able to do work. And like today, today is Saturday and usually I upload a video on a Saturday, but I didn't have anything this week. Like I couldn't fathom 
sitting down and mustering up the energy to like try and do an anti-haul right now. This is gonna sound so like weird, but it's true. Like, what the fuck does new makeup matter when like your life is kind of up in shambles? Watch your profanity. People I know like in my own life have literally died this week. Somebody I didn't know personally, but who I've admired for almost a decade now, like she took her own life this week. Like for me to have sat down at any point in this week and tried to have mustered up the energy to like talk about new releases and what I thought of them and whether I wanted them or not, like I wouldn't have been able to do it. I would have just sat there the entire time feeling resentful and like everything was super pointless. And that's not a frame of mind in which I want to film a video, nor is it like a productive frame of mind in which to even like to really talk about anti-consumerism because I would have just come off as really like bitchy and tired. And I think the bitchiness and tiredness would have been warranted because it's coming out of a place of like grief, but doesn't change the fact that the video would have been bitchy and tired. If I had had any more pre-filmed videos, I definitely would have released one of those, but I didn't. That lip gloss collection was the last pre-filmed, pre-edited video that I had. And so that's why I'm kind of bringing all this get ready with me because the facts are that me sitting down here and doing makeup for the first time in several days in actually almost a week, the last time I did my makeup was, was on Sunday when I had sat down to film in the morning. I'm doing this to get ready for the rest of my day, right? Like this is part of my getting my shit together. Cause what I did, oh no, I did not intend to put that under my eyes. This is such a heavy concealer. Well, we done goofed now. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't talk and try and do your makeup y'all. But basically what ended up happening is I, I laundered all my sheets and my duvet covers and then I changed them right before I went to sleep. And then when I got up this morning, I did basically what I've shown you guys before in my how to get out of depression squalor video. So I'm going to link that up in the cards because the past like four or five days I've been in like a funk and so I've been sort of living in that depressive squalor state. And so I did all of the stuff that I do in that video this morning, right? Which is to say that like I took some time, I actually cleaned a bunch of the stuff around my room. My room feels livable, my sheets are all clean. And then I went in for a shower and now I've come out and I'm getting ready. I'm very deliberately taking the time to sort of sit down, put on some makeup and film this. Firstly, cause it returns like a semblance of normalcy to my life, right? Like filming is a part of my weekly routine. And so the fact that I'm um, not ignoring it and I'm actually sitting down and doing it, it helps me to feel like a little more normal and a little more stable and a little less like the world has turned upside down. But more importantly, I've talked about this in a previous video before, but when I feel like garbage and I feel like my life situation is garbage and that my like emotions and my mood is kind of garbage sitting down and putting on makeup and physically transforming myself so that when i look in the mirror i don't look like the really like depressed garbagey version of myself but i instead look like a person who is at the very least physically put together it serves as a very stark physical reminder that transformation is possible and that i'm not like doomed to be stuck in like a weird depressive cycle or low mood or whatever for the rest of my life. It's me physically transforming myself from really depressed, not put together, sleeping all day version of Prachi to like Prachi who's going to sit down, bust out her planner and then actually get shit done because she has a Spanish midterm on this Tuesday and she needs to like sit down and study for it. Look at me like referring to myself in the third person, like okay. The act of me filming this is part of what I hope my channel helps accomplish for people out in this world, I guess, for like those of you who take the time to watch me. Um, because I've talked about this like time and time and time again on my channel, but I really cannot emphasize this enough. Like social media really encourages a culture of perfection. And this idea that like everyone is put together all the time, that everyone's life is perfect all the time, that everyone is like on a high point in their life at all times. We see on social media the perfected versions of everyone's lives and personalities. It is very, very rare that you see a person put like breakdowns or terrible moments 
of their lives on social media. Unless you're like Trisha Paytas crying on her floor or whatever and you're just basically like trolling and having breakdowns low-key for like attention, the vast majority of people like to present an image of themselves that's absolutely perfect. So one of the things like I strive to sort of do in my channel is like, listen, a lot of my like breakdowns and shit, like they are for me and me alone. Because me like crying, that one's just for me. Like y'all don't get to see that, right? Like that's mine and mine alone. So I like excise as much of that as possible without ruining the integrity of the video. However, I do leave as much of the rest of that stuff in as possible to remind everyone like life isn't perfect. It's not always like some beautiful upward sloping trajectory. Life isn't like, um, oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to bring up trigonometry, but like life is not a tangent curve graph. Life is like sine or cosine, right? It's gonna keep going up and down, up and down. And so showing the moments when life kind of has me a little bit down and then being like, it's gonna be all right. <laughs> like I'm going through it right now, but even though I'm going through it right now, I will like get through it. I think that's important because sometimes I'm like having the time of my life and I have everything figured out and I'm like very put together and all of my friends who believe in the zodiac are like oh Prachi you're such a Capricorn you have everything so together in your life you're such an earth sign or whatever but then there are also days where I'm just like I'm lost and I'm floundering and I don't know what the hell to do <laughs> and I just think like oh Nas and AZ were right like life's a bitch and then you die pretending like those days don't exist like that doesn't get me anywhere, right? In fact, a large part of my problem in life stems from the fact that for a long time I avoided the appearance of imperfection, right? I was like so obsessed with being perfect that I refused to acknowledge when like things were going wrong. I would just like be in denial, like that dog sitting in a room surrounded by flames going, I'm fine, this is fine. And so a large part of, I think, like, my own personal growth over the no by year, because a lot of people talk about, you know, Hannah especially, Hannah Louise Poston, she's talked about how the no by has been so important in helping her loosen her grip on perfectionism. Like, that's been 100% true for me as well. And I think more so than for me personally, like, I'm sure for Hannah, um, the no by year was the most important factor in helping loosen her grip on perfectionism. But for me personally, I find that actually the pursuit of this YouTube channel has been the thing that has most let me loosen my grip on perfectionism in large part because like, I did not know what the hell I was doing when I started this YouTube channel. Like I have never known what the hell I'm doing on this YouTube channel. Like I sat down to film my first video, not even knowing how to edit any videos, right? Like I figured, that stuff out on the fly after having recorded the footage for my first video in horrible lighting, super out of focus, right? And since the start of my channel and the start of my like skills, so to speak, in editing on February 5th, 2019, like I have routinely messed up time and time and time again. I don't even know, like I'm filming this right now on Saturday. My Traditional upload day is a Saturday. I don't even know if this is going to go up on Saturday. Like, <laughs> my upload schedule has not been perfect. My video editing skills have not been perfect. I have made like a thousand errors. There have been so many times where I've like filmed something and then like lost the footage. There was that time I literally accidentally deleted a video off of my channel and I had to like re-upload that video like the clown that I am, right? Like. This has been like a really like weird, rough and bumpy journey, like the journey of starting a YouTube channel and the way that it has been just like an absolute mess and yet still turned out all right in the end has been by far the most reassuring thing for me in letting me know that like I don't have to be perfect in everything and that like the beauty of life doesn't come from it being stunningly perfect at all times but in fact from the like weird messy imperfections of it all god i sound like such a cliched hack but the older i get i say this like i'm like a thousand years old and not like 25 but the older i get the more i'm just like damn like those cliches they're right like they existed for a reason 
Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now and I'm gonna put on lipstick and much like I layered like pink and orange on my eyes I'm actually gonna do the same thing for my lips and it is so dark outside all of a sudden What is going on with the weather? So I'm gonna put like a neutrally pink color first all over my lips Cute cool whatever then I'm gonna take an orangey red and I'm just gonna like put it in the center like a gradient lip Yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off the camera and I'm gonna put on like a little bit of black liquid liner on the top. And the reason why I'm gonna turn off the camera is because like I can't talk while doing that. So I will be right back with eyeliner on. Okay, so I did that. And then I also moved myself a little bit closer to the windows, hoping that I can still capture some light. I just realized I've never done this on camera, but I think you guys should know that every single time I do my makeup, like if I put any products on my base, I always redraw my beauty mark back in. Because you know I'm South Asian and nazar nalag jai. I just realized that makes no sense if you're not South Asian, but um, Nazar is like the evil eye or whatever, right? So the idea with Nazar Nalag Jai is like you're wishing somebody that the evil eye does not fall upon them. And you basically say that phrase, oh, Nazar Nalag Jai, a lot of times when somebody is looking particularly like beautiful and radiant because, and oh, this actually ties right back in with the idea of perfectionism. There's this idea that if your face is too perfectly beautiful like if it's absolutely unmarred by anything if it's purely perfect that it will attract the evil eye and so the idea is that if you have a beauty mark this like black spot on your face that's not something like bad or ugly or hideous that's actually good luck and a form of protection you are better off for having that imperfection on your face than if your face was like 100% perfect. To be beauty marked is actually like a point of pride. Now that I've made the decision to like grow my hair out and so I'm like waiting for a really long time in between like cuts, because basically from now on, the only time I'm going to go in for cuts is to make sure that I'm not getting like a dreaded mullet situation in the back. The downside of that is like now my hair, it's at the state where it's no longer like so short that I can just leave it alone and it will look fine. It's at the state where now it's like just a little bit too long, like it gets a little bit in my eyes. I have to begin really putting some like product and stuff in it. Otherwise it'll be like kind of like a weird, flat, shapeless mess. The ultra convenience of having very short hair is like slowly beginning to dissipate. And I'm kind of, it's, it's making me have like a couple second thoughts. Cause I'm like, oh God, I really, do love having short hair like it's so convenient it's so easy although now that i've said that i suppose if i follow trisha paytas logic that must mean i'm a trans man because you know it's impossible to be a woman and enjoy having short hair <laughs> have y'all been following this trisha paytas thing you know i was like genuinely so confused when I first heard about it. And then I was like, wait, hasn't she like come out as a black person and as a lesbian and as a chicken nugget before? So I was like, okay, she must be trolling then. But just like on the off chance that I was just being like really uncharitable and this was like real, I went to go watch her video. And I don't know, to me, it just seems like she's realizing that it sucks to be a woman in a patriarchal society. <laughs> and she's tired of like all the expectations that society places on women in terms of their appearance, in terms of their personality, in terms of what is proper for women to be able to do or not. Um, it seems like she's just like tired of gender norms, which like mood, but I feel like being tired of gender norms doesn't necessarily like make a person trans, right? And I think that's actually very evident in the fact that some of the people who are the most tired of gender norms are like hardcore radical feminists who are often like exclusionary towards trans people. Just because you're like exhausted at the confines placed on you by patriarchal society like doesn't somehow make you trans. Now, I did watch like a couple videos of actual trans people reacting to Trisha Paytas and it seems like things are pretty split like I've seen a couple people saying like 
nothing of what she's saying sounds like she's trans. I've seen a couple people saying that it sounds like she's kind of having like a little bit of a crisis that maybe they had gone through something similar towards like the beginning of their process of coming to terms with the fact that they were trans. And then I've also seen a couple really interesting um, videos where a, like a couple trans people have suggested that it seems like what Trisha's struggling with right now and discussing, it has more to do almost with people who are gender fluid or non-binary and that there exists the possibility of Trisha Paytas actually maybe being gender fluid or non-binary and just not simply having the vocabulary for it and so therefore latching on to the label trans. Um, so I don't know. I mean like I want to leave space for the fact that I'm just, I'm like sitting here doing nothing. Let me put on blush. So the same two blushes that I put on my eyes, I'm gonna layer them onto my cheeks. So I'm gonna put a light wash of the pink first and then I'm gonna layer the orangey one on top. I wanna leave room for the possibility that Trisha Paytas is genuinely actually going through some sort of a gender identity crisis and not merely a gender expression crisis, right? Because there is a, big difference between your gender identity and your gender expression. So your gender identity is like what gender you think you are or identify as. So I, for example, identify as a woman. No matter how long or short my hair is, no matter how tomboyish or not I have been in the past, I have always identified as a woman. However, my gender expression has not always been the most overtly feminine. So gender expression is like like your personal choice, almost, in a sense. It's like the way that you present yourself into this world, the way that you express yourself into this world, where does it fall on the gender spectrum? So like my hair, for example, and the fact that I almost never wear skirts and I don't wear high heels, those are slightly more masculine forms of gender expression. However, I do from time to time enjoy wearing a dress. I'm sitting here wearing makeup right now and I wear like long dangly earrings. And in our society, those things are coded for the most part as feminine forms of gender expression. To me and to quite a few other people who I saw on the internet who are like well-versed in issues of gender, like a lot of like trans and non-binary folks, they think that Trisha Paytas is primarily having um, a crisis of gender expression. She's kind of chafing against the ways in which society forces women to have a very ultra-feminine gender expression. Because that is like the external pressure of society, that if you are biologically born a man, you must also identify as a man, and then you must express your gender in a highly masculine way. And same thing goes for being a woman, and it seems like Trisha Paytas is just like not down for that anymore. Oh, the sun is doing really interesting things to the lighting here. But I do, however, want to leave room for the fact that perhaps it is not a crisis of gender expression alone, that perhaps it is a crisis of gender identity as a whole. And I especially want to leave room for that because the reality is, like, although I'm a part of the LGBT community, I actually like don't know what the trans or non-binary experience is like, right? That is like a failing on my own part because I have not done like the work to 100% figure out how it is trans and non-binary people feel, right? It's like not my place to be like, this is not a valid expression of transness. This is not a valid expression of non-binariness. And that's why I have like deferred to and defaulted to actual trans and non-binary people's videos and views on Trisha Paytas. And I, for the large part, just avoided like everybody else's interpretations on the subject. Because I just like, I don't know, right? That's like a gap in my own knowledge that I have not 100% rectified because if you think about like Caitlyn Jenner right like she transitioned like very late in her life and so the idea that like you must have a realization about like who you are ultra early otherwise it's like not valid or it's somehow like a ploy for attention or a scam or whatever like that that doesn't quite hold I don't really know what's going on with Trisha Paytas. I guess we'll like find out soon enough like what actually is happening. I was about to say that like I'll be watching what's going on with keen interest, but like that's a lie. I don't actually care enough about Trisha Paytas or YouTube drama to do that. Like my life has a lot going on in it regardless for me to actually keep a close eye on this issue. But if it does happen to be like real, I hope she figures it out. So I think I've done everything that I want to do with this look here. I'm just gonna... 
Although this is the container for the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, this is not actually the All Nighter Setting Spray. I found this like empty bottle while I was moving and I remembered that I had kept this bottle because I really like the mister on this thing, like it's really fine. And so I took a toner that I didn't like using and I popped it in this and I've been using it to just kind of like get rid of any powdery residue on my face. The last couple of bits before I like get on with my day because I do actually feel like so much better. Firstly, cause you know, I look a lot better than I did, but I think also like the act of filming and engaging in a little bit of a conversation out loud, it was normalizing. I feel more like my normal self now and less like the weird sleepy shell of myself that I was feeling. But I'm gonna like put on some of my favorite perfume because scent is actually like really, really keyed in with our memories and our emotions. And so smelling really pleasant things that you associate with good times and that you like, it can have like a very real impact on your mood. Scent related things do a lot to just help me sort of feel a little bit better on the surface. It's like a five to 10% bump in mood. And sometimes like that's enough. Y'all, like what is this lighting situation? Why does it look like the twilight zone in here? Okay, so by the end of it all, the lighting in that video was like completely out of whack. So I've decided to film a little bit later in the day as the lighting has gotten better. What the final look that I created looks like. It's like a very nice, almost monochromatic, like two-tone pinkish orange look. I really like it. I think it's really flattering. Is it the most like autumnal look in the world? Like, no. Um, I think people would probably categorize this as something of like a spring look, but I don't care. So this is what I look like at the end of all of this. I've actually had like a pretty productive day so far. So truly things have gone better than I thought they would. Thanks for sticking it out with me all the way to the very, very end of this very chatty get ready with me that started out in something of a low place, but hopefully for you, like it did for me, ended on something of a high note. Well, I don't know if I would go so far as to call it like a high note, but definitely like a higher place than where we began. As always, I hope you have a great upcoming week. And even if your upcoming week ends up becoming messy or imperfect, I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Thanks for watching. Bye.